uh, welcome to Southboro, Massachusetts uh, with, with the, the virtual tour here. So uh, this is just a little bit of a, an overview of our uh, main campus. Uh, so Fay School um, is a junior boarding school. So we're a little different uh, in the sense that we cater more towards the younger students. Uh, we serve students from kindergarten through ninth grade and our boarding program is from seventh grade through ninth grade. So our youngest boarding students are usually around the age of about 12 years old. Our oldest uh, are usually around about 15 years old. Um, we have, a, it's a co-ed student population, uh, so boys and girls. Uh, we have students from about uh, you know 14 different states around the United States, uh, and then also about 24 countries around the world. So a really good diverse international population and domestic population uh, here. Uh, what you're looking at right now is really the, the center of our campus here. Um, so like I said, we have a 30-acre main campus and then we also have a 36-acre athletic campus located up the road actually just past Elise uh, and uh, St. Mark's. Uh, and as you can see, St. Mark's is right over here. Uh, so you'll, you'll get a little bit more information about them, but we are very good neighbors. Uh, over in Southboro, Massachusetts. Um, but I wanted to kind of give you the, the general sense of, of what Southboro looks like. Uh, this is obviously a beautiful uh, kind of overview of, of us in the, the fall months. Um, you know, again, this being the center of our campus, I'll bring you right down into it. This is our root academic building. Um, so the, the, the school is organized into three different divisions. Uh, so primary school is kindergarten through second grade, lower school is third grade through sixth grade. And then our upper school, so when you hear me say upper school, that's referring to our seventh grade through ninth grade. Uh, and again, that's where we have our boarding program. So this building in front of us is the root academic building. This is where uh, the majority of lower school and upper school classrooms are located. So the students will be uh, going into this building uh, to attend their academic classes. Uh, we have a, a really great diverse academic program where, you know, obviously they'll get their core curriculum, but they'll also get a really full arts program, uh, a wellness program. Uh, they'll have access to our innovation lab, which I'll show you a little bit later on um, as our, you know, we have our, our creators class and design courses uh, for that. Uh, right around the center of our campus here, we have our dormitories. So. The way that the, the dorms are set up is it's all single gendered. Um, so it's all boys or all girls. Uh, this one that you're looking at right here, uh, just above our wellness center on the first floor is a boys dorm um, where we have most of our eighth and ninth grade boys uh, that, that live there. Uh, as we work around uh, the, the quad here, um, you'll see this building here, which is our dining hall. Uh, and on the first floor, we have our student lounge where we have some ping pong tables, a big screen TV, uh, some vending machines uh, for the students. Uh, and then as we work back kind of around towards the academic building, this building hidden in, hidden in the trees here is, is uh, our gymnasium. So we have uh, two full-size basketball courts, a rock climbing wall. Uh, we have some, some music practice rooms located upstairs. Our theater is upstairs uh, as well. Um, but this will kind of give you a sense as to, you know, that you know, as much as we have 30 acres of space on campus, it really is kind of a close-knit community and, and, you know, a, a tight-knit area that we, we tend to focus our, our time on. Um, so to discuss a little bit more about Fay, um, again, we have a, a total population of about 475 students. Uh, in the upper school, uh, we have 155 boarding students and 135 day students. Uh, so it's a pretty even mix between boarding students and day students. Um, our, uh, our upper school uh, curriculum, uh, you know, again, you know, looking at the, the, the core classes there, um, our math and foreign language programs uh, are the only two that we really level. So if you're thinking about, you know, your students level, you know, and, you know, who we can serve, uh, in math and foreign language, we have the ability to really be flexible there. So those are the only two subjects where you may see students from seventh and eighth grade together or eighth and ninth grade together, depending on the student's ability. Um, we've had uh, a number of, of ninth grade students taking pre-calculus uh, at FAE. So, you know, our math level does go up pretty high. Um, I know we, get, we often get a lot of questions about, um, you know, how, you know, my, my son or daughter is a very high level math student, you know, 
will you be able to serve them? Um, we've done a very good job with, with some of those high level students. Um, but we do have a wide range and I think that that's a, a, an important point. You know, as a junior boarding school, our, our purpose is really to prepare our students for the next level. Um, just like at the secondary school level, your, your job is to prepare them for college. Our job is to prepare them for that secondary school American boarding experience. Um, so, you know, we, we, we try to kind of really model ourselves after those secondary schools. Um, and, you know, with a lot of our curriculum, with a lot of our expectations of the students, um, the way the students prepare, um, I would say the biggest difference between us and them is really the amount of supervision, the amount of guidance and support. Um, you know, we understand we have students at a younger age and they're going to make mistakes. And, you know, they're, they're you know, this is oftentimes their first experience being away from home. So, you know, kind of working them through that process and getting to, getting them to be more confident students, uh, more capable students, um, and really to be more understanding students of, you know, not only themselves, but of the, you know, what it means to be a member of a community. Uh, that's really kind of our, our job uh, at Faye Schools. So I always say to families, you know, if you are considering, uh, you know, sending your child over to an American boarding school for ninth through 12th grade, um, you know, the, one of the best ways to prepare for that experience is to look into a junior boarding school. Oh, sorry, my coworker. I have a little uh, cat that's also my coworker over here. So she might be jumping into the screen <laughs> every now and then. Um, but no, it's, you know, the, one of the best ways to prepare is to, to look into a junior boarding school um, and, and think about that experience, you know, even for a year, um, you know, oftentimes our, our students will enter in seventh grade and stay through ninth grade. Um, but we will definitely get students that, that come in for eighth, eighth grade and ninth grade or just that one year of ninth grade um, just to get a year of, of kind of preparation before moving forward. Um, I will take you around just uh, so you can see our athletic campus. Um, we do have a great, uh, let's just go back here. We do have a great athletic program as well. Um, so it's a, it's a full athletic program. Uh, we offer you know, over uh, 20 uh, different options throughout the year. Um, you know, our three seasons are fall, winter, and spring. Again, similar to the, the, that of the, the secondary schools. Um, we do have a 36 acre athletic campus, which is what you're looking at here. Um, this is actually located just past St. Mark's. Um, and this is where we have our soccer fields. Over here in the corner, we have uh, our softball field. And then we also back along this way, we have our baseball diamonds. So um, our athletic program is really designed so that everyone plays. Uh, you know, we want students, and this is general to really, I would say every aspect of Faye, but we want students to experience new things here. Um, we want them to, to really grow and, and kind of try and push themselves outside of their comfort zone. Uh, we feel like, you know, that this is, this is the perfect place to do that, especially when you're preparing for that next level uh, of education where, you know, maybe you have to start kind of start specializing in, in certain areas or, you know, start really focusing in on, on certain areas. Um, you know, this is, this is a great place to go and try a, a brand new sport or pick up an instrument or, you know, be a, a part of the play um, for the first time and, and just see whether or not you like it um, or see if you can discover some, some new talents there. Um, but our athletic facilities are, are really pretty amazing. Um, you know, students are, are very fortunate. You know, I always remind our students how fortunate they are to, to be, you know, a seventh grader or an eighth grader uh, and have the resources that they have here. Um, but as you can see, our, you know, our, we have a lot of fields all around the campus uh, down here as well. Um, and then the next part I want to just take you guys through is uh, really, you know, what do we do with the students as they move forward? Um, and, you know, how, how do we help them? Uh, try and find that that next school. Um, so like I said, a, a lot of what we're doing is, you know, preparing them for that, that next step and preparing them for a boarding experience at the next level. Um, and the way that we do this is really through our five core values. Um, and, you know, these core values will certainly carry with them throughout their, their secondary school experience, um, but also hopefully for, you know, well beyond that as well. Um, you know, academic excellence, earnest effort, uh, honorable conduct, dedicated service and wellness of mind, body and spirit. Um, you know, really trying to cater to the, the whole student. Uh, and with that said, it's really, you know, trying to uh, not just prepare them for that secondary school experience, but make them a re really strong candidate for those secondary schools. Um, you know, part of that process is uh, working with our secondary school counselors. 
uh, and you know they'll, they'll take them through their application they'll look at their profile they'll identify areas that maybe they, they need to develop a little bit more uh, as they, they start to pursue that that application um, and you know we'll work with the families and you know it's, it's a lot of open communication with our counselors uh, trying to make sure that you know they understand the process but also understand the expectations of, of that next school um, and and really just make sure that they're aware of, of all, all the options um, that are available to them uh, and, and w ones that would be a really good fit for, for their, their child. Um, so we have uh, four people that work in our secondary school counseling office. Um, and, you know, again, they, they start working with their, the, the students in the, the spring before they, they start to uh, go through that application process. Uh, so, you know, there's plenty of kind of lead in time where they're going to work with the, you know, the students and, and again, start identifying these gaps, you know, if, uh, you know, they haven't had, you know, many service opportunities or they haven't been involved in, in a lot of those kind of weekend service opportunities, maybe that's something that we want to push them. If they, you know, uh, you know, play only one interscholastic sport and the other two are the intramural sports, maybe they pick up another interscholastic sport. Um, or, you know, maybe it's more about just kind of volunteering uh, and, and getting more involved with, with the club's program or, um, you know, in the, in the residential life program. Uh, so a lot of options for them there. Uh, the secondary school counselors do um, take the students, again, uh, through that process. And, uh, you know, it's really about making sure that they're well-rounded. So athletics, arts, um, you know, looking at our innovation lab. Um, making sure that they, they get involved uh, in, in that space uh, and, and, you know, whether it's on, again, on weekends, there are different projects that are, uh, you know, voluntary um, or, or really being focused on kind of what that, you know, what that curriculum is going to look like for them over the, you know, course of seventh, eighth and ninth grade. Um, our upper school uh, does involve uh, an advisory group. So every student will get a faculty advisor. Um, much like at the secondary school level, um, where they work with about five or seven students uh, each. Uh, it's all boys or all girls at Fay um, in the advisory group. Uh, we just feel like at this age, there's a lot of change happening and there's a lot of things that they're going through and it might be a little bit more comfortable just kind of uh, being able to discuss that around just boys or, or just the girls. Um, we do have uh, opportunities to work with the younger children. So uh, we have primary school helpers. A uh, great way to give back to the community, uh, family-style meals. So everyone, you know, eats together. We start our meal together. We end our meal together. Um, you know, we sit at these round tables here over here at the bottom. Um, and there's a faculty member at each table. And you know, really, I think the meals are, uh, you know, it's 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 really an education. You know, it's it's more about teaching them how to communicate with one another while having a meal. Um, and you know, not just kind of goofing around with their friends and and really kind of taking that time. Uh, a little bit more serious and, you know, just it, obviously a break from the day, but um, making sure that we're, we're still communicating with each other. Uh, and then plenty of leadership opportunities. And I would say that that's another big difference, uh, you know, for us, obviously, with the younger students, our ninth graders are the oldest. So there are plenty of leadership opportunities for our eighth and ninth graders, whether it's student government, it's being captain of a sports team, uh, being a dorm proctor, or a day student proctor, um, an admission ambassador, or a tour guide. Um, there are a lot of a lot of opportunities for leadership for you know our seventh, eighth, and ninth graders. Uh, we do some community service trips. Uh, so for grade seven, they all go to work on community farms. Grade eight, they all work at New York City. Uh, or they all go to New York City and, and uh, work in, in different places uh, to to give back to the the city. Uh, and then in ninth grade, they go to the Dominican Republic for an international service trip. Some more information on our secondary school counseling. Um, so, uh, you know, we've, we work with schools all over uh, the country, all over the world. Um, so uh, plenty of options for our students. And, you know, again, it's all about finding the right school for, for each student. Um, this is a list just quickly of uh, the, the top 20 schools where our FAE graduates have matriculated over the last five years. Um, so while, of course, again, we, you know, we love sending them to some of the top schools, uh, you know, around, it's, it's much more about the right fit. So, you know, I want to make that clear with, with the families that not every student goes to these schools. Uh, you know, we, we have a lot of different options here, and especially in the Northeast of the United States. And, um, you know, we, we really want to make sure that that next experience is a good one for the student. Our residential life, so just a couple of quick pictures of inside the dorms, uh, so you can kind of see where, where the students live. 
Uh, it's usually rooms of two or three students, um, never more than three students in a room. And then of course we have a great weekend program. So, uh, you know, taking care of the students on the weekends um, and making sure that they, they stay active and busy, but also have a little bit of fun as well. And then the last thing is the, the summer programs. So we have uh, a couple of great summer programs for our students. Um, we do have, uh, you know, two, it's really based on the level of English for the students. Um, so the academic adventures are for the fluent English speakers and English immersion is obviously for the students who are still kind of uh, developing their English language skills. Um, it ranges from ages 10 to 15 years old. It's a range of about two weeks to four or five weeks of overnight camps. Um, where they'll take classes in the morning and then they'll do uh, a lot of fun kind of summer activities uh, in the afternoons and the evenings and on the weekends. Um, I'd say that this leads into a little bit of our upper school as well, where we do have an English language program for our uh, upper school international students. So if students are, again, still developing their English skills, they can absolutely come to, to Fay, uh, spend a year or two in our English language program, uh, be, you know, develop some fluency, uh, and then transition into a mainstream program uh, after that. And then that's pretty much the, the, the presentation. I, I will, I'm happy to go over for a few minutes kind of what's been going on in the last few months here. Um, I know that uh, you know, there have been a lot of questions and uh, you know, a lot of concerns about what's happening over here in the United States. And um, I will say that you know, we've, we've done a, a, a pretty great job, I think, in, in Massachusetts but, uh, specifically in terms of kind of managing it. Um, Granted, it, it hasn't been an easy process, but we've been doing a, a good job, I think, as a state government, uh, but then also as, you know, kind of an education community here of making sure that, you know, we, we're still offering a lot of the, the same programs and a lot of the same uh, kind of great curriculum for our students. Uh, this spring, we, we switched to distance learning for the entirety of the, the spring term. Um, Distance learning, you know, was kind of building the plane as we flew where, you know, we, we certainly were developing it each week and making changes to it and, you know, getting feedback from all the families, from the teachers and making sure that we made that program really strong. Um, it, it, it took, a, I think, a little while for everyone to kind of get into it uh, and into the swing of it. But, you know, teachers were there. Uh, we still had a lot of our community building uh, aspects of, you know, we had our advisory meetings still, we had dorm meetings, we had sports team workouts and meetings, uh, you know, wellness classes, we had uh, different service opportunities uh, for the students. So there are a lot of opportunities outside of just the core curriculum for the students to still feel like they're a part of the, the curriculum, uh, sorry, part of the community, uh, and also connect with their, with their teachers. Um, distance learning for us, was really, uh, you know, it was a combination of asynchronous classes and synchronous classes. So, um, you know, there was a lot of online work, uh, a lot of recordings, but also a lot of live classes, a lot of drop-in sessions with teachers. Uh, teachers were running classes at, you know, 7.30, 8.30 at night uh, for our international students who are in different time zones. So it made it possible for them to attend a class. They would run a class two times a day, once in the morning, once in, at night. So for all the different time zones. Um, we serve students from 12 different time zones. So, uh, so there's never a concern about a student, you know, who needs to stay up till three in the morning just to attend a class or four in the morning. Um, there are options for, for all of those students. Um, looking ahead, you know, hopefully here in Massachusetts, things are, are moving well with the reopening and we're hopeful that we're gonna open up in the fall on time. Uh, and we're gonna be able to welcome all of our boarding students back on campus. Um, obviously, it's, it's going to come down to the guidelines and the restrictions of, of the state government um, of, you know, international travel, um, you know, if there are any restrictions that way. So we are prepared to offer distance learning again, um, you know, right from the start for any student that can't return to campus. Um, but we are hoping that we're going to get, you know, uh, if not everyone, then the majority of our students back on campus and into the normal kind of swing of things. Um, we're obviously going to have to keep an eye on how to, you know, different protocols um, that we're going to need to follow in order to make it safe for everyone. Um, we're very responsible that way. The safety and health uh, of the students and the teachers are obviously the, the top priority. So, um, so that's kind of how we're moving forward. Um, as, as we get more information, we'll be able to make more specific decisions. But I think we're really planning on three different styles right now, which is, you know, everything on campus in person. Uh, everything remote learning and distance learning or a hybrid of the of the two um, where we're going to have some on campus and some distance learning and we're going to be prepared for all three of those um, moving into the fall. Um, 
so that's that's a little bit about Faye. I don't want to take up too much of, of, of the time, um, but you know, obviously I'll, I'll still be here. So any questions that you guys have, please feel free to, to reach out um, or, and ask them here and I'm happy to answer. Yeah, so thank you very much, Matt. So I think in terms of the presentation, I'll, I would not, I think we should move on, you know, to uh, Alex, you know, on, on for her. Uh, but there is definitely, uh, there are some uh, questions about Faye in the chat. So I think, Matt, if you don't mind, uh, uh, you can uh, type the answer in the chat. Uh, and, uh, but now I think uh, we, uh, like, I uh, would love to um, uh, welcome Alex after Sandy giving like a quick uh, summary, you know, uh, of, of the, the presentation of Faye. Uh,那刚才就是呃飞的麦老师，他是呃飞的招生官，就讲了关于就是飞的一些情况。那我概括的讲一下。呃，刚才大家也看到，就是飞有一个就是线上的一个呃，就是呃房校，所以大家都可以
就现场的这一些课程的一些结合，所以就两个都有。那呃，老师呢，就是呃，会有时候是在早上的这种就是七点半，呃，或者是到晚上的八点半也会有课堂，所以就是孩子不需要说啊，可能是深夜。在他们的深夜时间去呃上课，然后就是有预录制的这种课程，或是呃是他们的早上跟他们的呃下午去做这种的课程。然后学校呢还是会希望九月份呃能够开放，但是他们也是充分的预备三种不同的情况。第一就是全面开放，大家可以就是呃在校园的这种教学；然后第二种情况就可能是呃全面的线上教学。那第三种就是一个线上跟线下的这个结合的。教学，那学校都是充分在预备，然后呃，一切呢就是要看暑假的时候啊、呃，这个麻省这个呃州的政府的这个规律，看看他们怎么去做呃这个最后的决定了。Thank you very much, Andy. All right, um, so I, I guess I'll uh, the uh, next up would be uh, we have uh, Alex here, you know, from, from uh, the gunnery, and uh, Sandy is uh, do we have the slide here? So, yes. And then Alex can. Start her part. Okay, Niha, Wang Shao, everybody. I'm so happy to be with you all this evening. Thank you for having us. And I wanted to say at the outset, um, picking up on some of the themes from Matt's talk and and anticipating what you're going to hear from Elise at St. Mark's, um, that a lot of what goes into finding the right boarding school for your child or for you, for our students who are here, is the concept of fit. What is the right fit boarding school for you? And there are lots of boarding school options in the United States, particularly in the New England area where we are all located. And there are lots of things that are similar between the boarding schools. You could almost take my slides and switch them from St. Mark's slides to phase slides in terms of the broad academic rigorous programming, the preparatory academic programming that we have, the wide variety of athletic and arts offerings. And really the most important thing is the communities that we have on our boarding schools, which are what makes coming to the United States and sending your child abroad such a special experience to be able to be a part of a two, three, four hundred student community with students from the United States and all over the world learning to live together and learn together and to develop their global perspectives. That's what we have that is so special at our boarding schools. But there are a lot of these schools to choose from, and that's where people like Foundation Global Education um, as a consulting group are so important. And, and they are a tool that your family can use in helping to find that right fit school. And similarly for us in our admissions offices, our partnerships um, with Foundation Global Education are so important. And I'm going to try to weave bits of that relationship into my remarks today. But we currently have three students at the Gunnery from Foundation Global Education. Um, and all three of them are unique. And if it weren't for our relationship with Foundation Global Education, I don't know if those students would have been the students that we enrolled because it was that extra information that we were able to get from Foundation Global that helped us know that for the gunnery, they were the right fit. And really, most importantly, for you as families, that we were the right school for your child. So I did want to just say that at the outset. But welcome to my presentation on the gunnery. I'm Alex Ince. I'm the Director of Enrollment. And I'm excited to share the next slide with you. And I'm so pleased that we have some translations here. Um, but the Gunnery is a boarding school located in Connecticut, which is about 90 miles from New York City. We were founded in 1850 by a very unique individual named Frederick Gunn, who, in addition to starting a school, was um, an 
abolitionist, which means he was against slavery in the United States, and that's a really important part of our school history. And he was also a very active outdoorsman, which is another really important part of our school history. And I'll weave that in. We have grades nine through 12, as well as a postgraduate year. And really what we are doing at the Gunnery, we are aiming to prepare our students for college. But while we do that, the most important thing that we are also focusing on is character development. And that is the reason that Frederick Gunn founded and began the school, and it is a ethos that continues to this current day and age where we are talking about character development and weaving it into everything we do at the school. So again, a few more statistics, and this is an early morning for me, a late night math quiz for you, because you'll see a math error on this slide that I noticed this morning. Um, we have 310 students, but actually, it's 312 if you add up the boarding and day students on this slide. It fluctuates every year, anywhere between about 305, 312 students. Um, as you can see, about three quarters of those students are boarding students and the other quarter are day students. And we welcome our student body from 25 states in the United States and anywhere between 17 and it sometimes can be up as high as 21, 22 countries. And of our total student population, about 20% are international. So our Gunnery campus is 220 acres. We, again, are about 90 miles or 144 kilometers from New York City. That's about an hour and a half to two hour drive to the city, to the major New York City airports. And that those are both important um, features for us. Our international students and our domestic students that fly to school typically utilize those New York City airports. And we are also able to use the city for cultural outings, to museums, uh, field trips, things like that, which is wonderful. We have basically two campuses. Um, the, the, the main campus that you're seeing a, a piece of here in this photo is where all of our dorms are located, our academic buildings, dining hall, and so forth. And then across the street are all of our athletic facilities. Um, we have two campus quads. Um, this is the main quad, and we'll see some more photos of this later. And a total of 43 buildings on campus, of which 10 are dorms. And just like at Faye School, and I think most boarding schools in New England, they are divided by gender. So five boy dorms, five girl dorms. In the background here, we're looking at Brinsmaid dorm. This is Teddy House, and this is where all of our freshmen, our ninth grade boys live. Um, it's a beautiful newer dorm. The rooms, interestingly, are all singles, um, and then there are common rooms on both the first and second floor. And very typical of boarding schools in New England, there are faculty apartments or dorm parent apartments that are attached to the dorms, and those are where faculty members, in the Gunnery's case, live um, and become the parents of the dorm and, and are there overseeing and running um, the operations of the dorm. This is our freshman girls dorm called Graham House. So all of our incoming ninth grade girls live in Graham House. We can go to the next slide, Sandy. I'll show this as an interior. Um, this is the inside of a Graham House dorm. These are all doubles. Um, and you can see you each have your own bed. There's, there are two desks, two dressers, two closets. Um, and again, in this dorm, as in most boarding school dorms in, in New England, there is a common room or a living room where kids can um, gather together and play games, watch TV, have dorm meetings, things like that. So a little bit more community information about the gunnery. We have uh, a total of about 65 international students. We have 55 faculty members. Our average class size is 12, and we have about a six to one student to teacher ratio. And here in the background, you can see that beautiful New England foliage. You can see a little bit more of our Tudor architecture. Um, it's a beautiful campus. So just some nuts and bolts. Our application deadline is January 15th, and by that time, we're hoping that you have been able to 
have your interview, you've completed your application. Um, most boarding schools in New England send out admissions decisions on March 10th. And some things that are special and unique this year because of uh, sort of what's going on around the globe with the pandemic, we are, are going to be um, test flexible this year, which means that if you aren't able to access and take an SSAT test, that's all right. We will be able to waive that requirement, which is typically a requirement, um, and work with you with your teacher recommendations and transcripts and so forth. If you are able to take the SSAT, we, we would welcome that being a part of your application because that is a very helpful tool. Um, but if there are limitations to access, we want you to know that we're going to be flexible in that regard. We would like for our international students whose primary language is not English to have a, an English test. Um, but again, we recognize that that might be ch more challenging this year to get to a TOEFL or an IELTS location. But there are other uh, language tests that you can take from home, like Duolingo, and we will be um, accepting that this year as well to help us uh, assess your English language skills. So a typical school year, again, our school year might be a little different this upcoming year, but I'm hopeful that by the next school year, when you all would be coming, that we will be back to a typical school year sequence, which has us beginning in the beginning of September. Um, and those first few days when you arrive on campus, we don't jump right into class. We have what's called orientation, which is really a period of time for international students to be getting over the jet lag, but for all of our students to be getting to know each other, getting to know your roommate, your dorm mates, getting to know your way around campus, it feels a little bit more like a summer camp to get you comfortable with your surroundings so that by the time classes do start uh, a few days later, you feel very comfortable in your new surroundings. Then we go through um, the first few months of school in October. We welcome parents um, for Parents Weekend. If, you're able, if your parents are able to join us, it's a, it's a wonderful weekend where they can come with you to class meet with your teachers. Then we go through to November when we have a Thanksgiving break. Um, then we come back for December and have a few weeks of classes before our long winter break. Then we resume classes in early January and we go through March when we have a nice long spring break. Um, both our winter break in December and the break in March are long enough for our international students to easily go home and have a nice vacation with their families. And then we have final exams and end of year ceremonies in um, May up through early June. That's, so that's the, the typical school year for us. And then this is an example, this is our daily schedule at uh, the Gunnery. It is what we call a block schedule. And I know in the chat, somebody asked Faye about Saturday classes, you can see here that we do have sort of a traditional boarding school schedule where we do go to class on Saturday. But you'll notice on Wednesdays and Saturdays, we only go to class until lunchtime. And those are days um, where in the afternoons, you might have um, an athletic game, a soccer game, a basketball game, a tennis match, um, against another school either at the gunnery or you might travel in a little gunnery bus to another boarding school to compete in um, an athletic competition there. And this is a very traditional boarding school schedule. Something else that I think you'll also notice is that we have all school meeting. You see that school meeting note on Monday, then again on Thursday and Saturday. And then if you look on Tuesday and Friday, you can see we have advisor lunch. And really what I love about pointing those things out is that we are gathering as an all school community five times a week. So you're going to be at a school with about 305 students. We are really going to be together as that full school size five times a week. And that's where you feel very much like a part of this gunnery family where we're making announcements, we're having speeches, we are laughing together with jokes that everybody's in on. 
we're congratulating students for um, college acceptances and their first basketball goal. Um, it's a wonderful part of boarding school fabric. And every boarding school is going to have some variation of these types of gatherings. And they really are special. I know my colleagues here will attest to those kinds of moments together. I was just going to show that the, the class day goes in different orders. There are different linked class blocks to accommodate labs, things like that. But I hope this one's coming more clearly. And here we are in our beautiful dining hall. This is called Sully Dining Hall. And you can see it's a bright, light, and airy building. We can fit our entire school community in the dining hall all at once. Most all of our meals are buffet style. And you can sit um, with your friends during most meals. Um, the exception is advisor lunch when you would sit at the same table every Tuesday and Friday with your advisor group and have lunch together. Um, but these are, it's a beautiful space. Weekend activities, we have on-campus activities and off-campus activities. So on-campus activities might be dances. We have a special tradition that harkens back to our outdoor roots of having fire pit Fridays where we have outdoor fires and students bring musical instruments and we eat these special treats called s'mores. Um, and then we get to go off campus to shopping, restaurants, movie theaters, things like that. So lots of fun things to unwind on the weekend with. Picture of two of our students. And this is a slide showing um, sort of the breadth of clubs and organizations that the gunnery has. And again, you're gonna find this at St. Mark's, at Fay School, we offer lots of clubs. And what I think is wonderful is that if there is a club that you are particularly interested in that we don't have, you are welcome to start a club. We've had, we've had students in past years start crossword puzzle clubs, a cheese aficionado club. But these clubs here that you'll see are the clubs that tend to um, repeat every year. Um, the one that I put at the top is the Asian Student Association Club, which is been a very active club for us, bringing in lots more um, information on um, Asian uh, traditions and festivals, and um, it's, it's been wonderful. At just uh, at the Gunnery, we have several what we call signature programs, very special programs at the Gunnery. One of them is our ideas uh, program, which is really our engineering course offerings. We offer over seven engineering related classes, including robotics and um, even two full year length long engineering classes with a lab. So if this is something you're interested in, we've got a very robust engineering program. Our robotics uh, club and class is very active. This shows our robotics team competing in a, a competition. We were given a special award this year because the the competition felt our team had such heart and grit, so we're very proud of that. And then another signature program, and this relates back to the Gunnery's um, commitment to character development. Um, we have a program called our LEADS program, and we, we've renamed it recently for the Center for Citizenship and Just Democracy. This is a four-year curriculum that really builds into the academic day in addition to your math, science, English, history classes, aspects of leadership and character development. It's something we're incredibly proud of. Um, I'll give an example. In the junior year, uh, every student takes part in a public speaking class where you learn to write and deliver a speech in front of the entire school community. Those speeches take place during our all school meetings and it's a wonderful tradition. Another signature program and given our history as a school, Founding in 1850, we have a, a very extensive archive where we've collected lots of historical documents and about five students each year become a gun scholar. They then spend uh, their senior year doing primary research in our archive to uh, write a extensive research project on some aspect of the gunnery's history. They then go outside of our gunnery archive and utilize area libraries such as at Yale, and in the end they write a, an extensive research project that's published into a booklet and presented to our school. It's a very, very 
um, rigorous and impressive uh, program. And finally, um, our Gunnery Go, our global online program. This is something, again, that we are proud of, like uh, Faye School and St. Mark's, you'll hear from us how we had to design in the moment our online remote learning platforms this spring. We have all had time to cultivate these and moving into the next school year, um, we are going to be uh, utilizing the remote platform as an option for our students. If they can't get back to campus in time, it's going to be a hybrid model where we will have in-person classes for those students who can return to campus this September. But if there are delays, um, we will have our uh, Gunnery Go, which is our global online remote learning platform. Um, and similarly, we have a synchronous uh, way to offer that. Um, it's something that we hope we will not need to have in the following school year, um, but we are very proud of how we were able to not only um, deliver academic material in this online remote platform, but all of the other aspects of boarding school, which are so important, those community aspects. And we were providing um, athletic and uh, exercise instruction. We were talking about what you need to do to maintain social, emotional, and mental health and happiness by taking time to uh, meditate or be quiet or find some um, solace with, with yourself. Um, so we're really looking in the remote platform as we do when you're with us on campus to help our students live a balanced life where you are able to develop as a scholar, an athlete, an artist, and, 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 and live a very happy, balanced life. And then we'll go through quickly because I don't want to take up too much of my time, of everyone else's time here. We have a magnificent new arts and community center that was opened this January, 32,000 square feet for all of our visual and performing arts. We have a new 415 person theater Sandy, we can go to the next slides of the interior. Um, this shows the new theater where we have all our productions as well as our all school meetings. And this is a shot of it from the outside. You can see into this lobby area. This has become a hub where students will gather during the day, during the evening, you're able to study here. There's a fireplace inside. It's a beautiful space. Again, just some more photos and some information about theater productions. We do two every year, a musical and a play, and just more of this new beautiful building. We have all kinds of visual art offerings, drawing, painting, photography, filmmaking, ceramics, mixed media. You can see here sort of our graphic design space and all kinds of performing arts offerings. So whether you come to the gunnery knowing already how to play an instrument and you wanna join one of our bands or ensembles, or if you'd like to learn a new instrument, all of that is possible. We have singing groups, all kinds of music offerings. And then our athletics. So again, you're going to find a wide range of athletic offerings. Every student at the gunnery in the afternoon after the class day ends takes part in a co-curricular offering that could be on one of our teams. Um, again, you know, we have a myriad of athletic facilities. We can go to the next slide, Sandy. Our newest being uh, a fitness center. Um, this used to be our theater, but with the opening of our brand new arts building, we were able to repurpose this into a brand new fitness center with machines and Peloton bikes, and it's gorgeous. I know that it seems like years away, but at some point in the junior year, you would engage with our college guidance office. We have three full-time college counselors. You would begin working with them in the middle of your junior year and continue working with them all the way through senior year to um, guide you. They would guide you through the college process. And what I've done here is I've shown the actual matriculations for this current year and the previous year for our students from China and Hong Kong. These are the school, these are the colleges where they actually matriculated. Um, and so you can see that it's a range. We've got, you know, uh, Bonnie went to is going to Cornell this year. Um, uh, another student, Alex, chose a smaller liberal arts school in Swarthmore. Um, one of my advisees, Erica, 
um, chose Northwestern University. So really it's a broad range of schools. And this goes right back to what I talked about at the beginning of the presentation about fit, that just as we are looking for the right fit boarding school for you at this point in your search, we are going to be helping you find that right fit college or university when you are getting ready to leave the gunnery. Uh, okay, so thank you very much, Alex. And uh, so now we'll be moving on to the uh, presentation from uh, uh, Elise, you know, from the St. Mark School. Well, hello everyone. My name is Elise Morgan, um, and I recently have taken on a new role at St. Mark's. I'm the Director of Enrollment Management. Um, my first official day in this position is tomorrow, um, but mm -hmm. I've been at St. Mark's for 13 years, and uh, over the years have gotten to know both Sandy and Zion at Foundation Global very well. Um, and as both Alex and Matt um, indicated, uh, they have done a tremendous job working with the students to figure out the best fit. Um, and it's been my pleasure over the past several years to work with Foundation Global in finding students that are a good fit for St. Mark's. So today, I'm gonna to spend a little bit of time covering five different areas of St. Mark's. Uh, first, I'm just gonna give you a, a quick general overview of the school. I'm gonna talk a little bit about our signature programs, a little bit about online learning this spring, and then touch upon athletics and music. So St. Mark's School is located in Southboro, Massachusetts. St. Mark's, um, our, one of our mottos is intentionally small, thinking big. We are a school that is intentionally small. We are 365 students, but we think big. We capitalize on our location, being about 30 miles outside of Boston. We challenge our students to expand their thinking to the larger world. And the goal is that by the time students graduate, they are independent, big idea thinkers uh, and world changers. So as I said, we have about 365 students. Um, most of our students are boarding students, 75%. Um, and we have about 90 day students or 25% of our population. This past year, we had 23 different states represented um, and 15 countries. Um, and we are a, a, a little more, uh, female heavy with 52% uh, female and 48% male. We have about 210 acres on our campus. Uh, that includes 50 different buildings. However, another phrase that we like to use at St. Mark's is a school under one roof because most of what happens happens in our main academic building. Um, we have 380,000 square feet of academic space. Um, about 18 to 20% of our students are international in any given year. Um, so this past year we had 69 international students. Um, we have 86 full-time faculty members. Uh, so it's a six to one student to teacher ratio. Um, and one thing that I have loved about my time at St. Mark's is that over 80% of the faculty live on campus. So most of us live here on campus in the dormitories and faculty housing with the students, which allows us the opportunity to not only teach, coach, um, eat our meals with them, but we get to know and we're available to students for extra help um, very easily. Um, our application deadline is January 15th. And similar to most of the independent schools uh, and boarding schools in the US, we have a March 10th decision, um, which is when we will send out our, our decision letters. We have two opportunities in early April for families to revisit our campus. This past year, um, it was, or this past spring, we did those all virtually. Um, and I imagine that moving forward, we're gonna do some combination of on campus and virtual revisit. Uh, the benefit of the virtual revisit this spring was that it was much easier for students from all different locations near and far to participate. And then April 10th is when families have to let us know whether or not they will be uh, accepting our, our offer of admission. Um, 
a glance at our vacation schedule. Um, school starts in early September. Um, we do have a nice break in late November. And then we have another break in December, which is about two weeks long, a winter break. Um, that's an opportunity for some of our international students if they choose to, to travel back home. Um, we have about a two week spring break in March. And then the academic year ends in the beginning of June um, with our graduation ceremony, some type of final exams and assessments, um, and uh, the end of the year. We have, uh, as I said, about 270 students that, that live on campus um, and 80 faculty members, uh, or sorry, 80% of our faculty. So we have lots of activities going on um, on the weekend. Um, we absolutely take advantage of our location being 30 miles outside of Boston. We try to get into Boston a couple times a month to take advantage of theaters, restaurants, museums. Um, we also do a number of activities on campus, um, whether it's dances, outdoor movies. Um, one of my favorite uh, and my family's favorite celebrations um, is the Chinese Lunar New Year celebration, which we do every year. Um, and our Asian Student Association, which is one of our affinity groups, puts on um, a wonderful sort of week-long celebration um, where every day they're telling the community about different traditions. Um, they put on a wonderful um, dinner one evening, um, and it's a really special celebration. So one of my favorite uh, activities that we do during the academic year. Um, several years ago, about three years ago, we changed our course schedules. So um, we have created a schedule that allows for really flexible use of time. Classes meet three days a week, uh, your typical academic classes, Monday through Friday. Uh, you have two 80-minute long block classes and one 45 minute short blocks. Um, this allows again for a flexible use of time. Um, you also can see that most days you only have four classes, four major academic classes, um, so you can really focus in on those particular subject areas. We do have class on Saturday, um, but our Saturday programming is a little bit different. I'm going to get into that in just a moment. Um, but classes meet on Saturdays about three times a month, and it's a two and a half hour uh, time period where you take one course intensively in the fall, winter, and spring. Um, so some of our signature programming and experiential learning, um, we have something called Lion Term, which happens uh, at the end of the school year. It's a two and a half week period where every grade focuses on a particular uh, different area. So classes end in the middle of May, and then students uh, in grades nine, 10, and 11, and 12 spend two and a half weeks uh, focusing in on a particular area. We have a career day every year where students have the opportunity to um, travel into Cambridge, Boston, New York City, Worcester, do job shadows, we also bring um, several parents, alums onto campus to talk about uh, particular careers. Um, we have a, 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 something called the Gray Colloquium, which is a speaker series. So about six times a year, we have outside speakers coming in and talking to our students. And we also have um, STEM and history fellowships, which provides students in the 11th and 12th grades the opportunity to really dig much deeper in a, to a particular area of interest um, in the STEM or history field. These are some of our Saturday classes. So students choose one class in the fall, one class in the winter, and one class in the spring. It meets, as I said, about three times a month um, in the fall, winter, and spring. And students take that course for two and a half hours. Um, so you really get to dive in. We have courses on campus like Leadership Academy, West African Drumming, Financial Literacy, um, Sociology Through Hip Hop. We also take students off campus, um, hiking and photography, museum exploration, um, uh, the art and science of cooking. Um, so it's a wonderful opportunity for students to uh, dive into something that maybe they have a particular interest or, or haven't had the opportunity to do before. 
Um, one of my favorite classes um, is the uh, American Sign Language class. Students get to spend, um, you know, several Saturdays learning American Sign Language. Um, and the past two years, it's actually been taught by a student uh, at St. Mark's. Um, her sister um, is hearing impaired, and so she uh, knows fluent American Sign Language and um, has led that course. So it also gives students the opportunity if they have something they want to teach. We've had students teaching those Saturday courses. We have many different global opportunities at St. Mark's. Um, this is certainly a hallmark of the school. This is a picture um, of the students that were participating in Lion Term um, the spring of 2019. Uh, they travel to Iceland um, and they spent two and a half weeks traveling around Iceland. Before going to Iceland, they spent their spring semester taking a course on Icelandic history. So they learned all about Iceland and then these students spent two and a half weeks traveling there. Um, this is a photo of um, students in La Tornel, Haiti. Uh, we have a partnership with an Episcopal school in Haiti um, and we've traveled there um, for the past uh, five years. We, didn't, we weren't able to go this past year um, but prior to that, we have, we've gone, we take a small group of about six students and we spend a, a week. Um, we live uh, at the school, we actually sleep in the principal's office uh, in sleeping bags, and we have the opportunity to uh, engage with the students um, for that week there. This past spring, we debuted our global citizenship diploma. So students that graduated with that distinction they had taken several courses uh, that uh, aligned with our global citizenship initiatives and have had the opportunity to do um, either travel domestically or internationally. Um, we have many different uh, experiential learning opportunities at St. Mark's, whether it's service learning through community service, um, semester or year long programs. We have exchanges with um, eight different schools across the world um, in every inhabited continent. We have a partner school, so students from St. Mark's study there. We bring students to St. Mark's from those schools. Um, we have trips over Thanksgiving and spring break for students, uh, particularly for international students if they are not able to travel home. Um, we do have Thanksgiving and spring break trip options. Um, and we also have summer programming uh, available um, through our global citizenship. Experiential, uh, so the uh, remote learning experience at St. Mark's. Um, this was an opportunity for us to very quickly pivot this spring. Um, we very quickly had to change the way that we, we went about teaching. Um, this slide shows uh, six different uh, classes. Um, Classes at St. Mark's this past spring met um, each course, so math, English, history, et cetera, met three days a week. Um, two classes were during a morning time slot, which allowed for students um, from uh, particularly um, our Asian countries, which had between 11, 12 hour time difference, to join in. Um, those classes ran from 8.30 in the morning till 11 in the morning which was 8.30 p.m. to 11 p.m. So those were all synchronous classes. And then one afternoon class, which was always recorded, um, so students could watch that um, and follow up. Um, I will share a link in the chat afterwards uh, to our website that um, you can actually watch snippets of these classes on our Experience St. Mark's Online. Um, and see what the virtual learning experience uh, was like for our students um, this past spring. The plan for this fall um, is going to be announced officially on July 15th, but the thinking right now is that it's going to be a hybrid model where we will bring some students back on campus um, and also do some remote teaching. Um, we are uh, very aware that some of our international students um, are having difficulty getting their visa appointments. Um, so all faculty this summer, we are required to do two weeks of um, professional development to develop courses that are going to be um, taught in the, in the fall that are accessible both um, virtually as well as on campus. So um, 
we are doing that from an admission perspective as well, planning for virtual um, visits and tours. Um, so that professional development for me actually is this week and next week. Um, so St. Mark's has developed, uh, dedicated a lot of time and professional development for all of our faculty to make sure that however we open in the fall, um, we are prepared. This is a picture of our STEM building. This opened in 2015. Um, it's a beautiful facility, um, lots of uh, wonderful spaces for students. Um, this is an example of our chemistry laboratory. Um, we have, I'll go back um, here. Um, we have uh, courses in engineering, robotics. Uh, we have a, a fabulous robotics team that's considered a winter sport at St. Mark's. Um, so students can do robotics if that's an area of interest, whether it's the actual physical building of the robots or coding um, and things like that. Um, we have many different opportunities for students to participate in sports at St. Mark's. You can see we have a number of different sports and teams. All students at St. Mark's participate in athletics. Um, we have uh, beautiful athletic facilities. This is our brand new uh, Coolidge Center, which opened um, about a year ago, um, and all of our teams have access to this facility. Um, and we also have uh, what we call thirds teams. Those are opportunities for students that may not have had a chance to try a particular sport. Um, they still play games, but they get to learn the new sport. Um, so many of our students come to St. Mark's, they've never heard of uh, crew or squash or ice hockey. Um, but pretty much any student can try any sport that they would like and there is a level for them to participate in. Um, a picture of our uh, art center. This houses our visual uh, and performing arts. Um, we have courses in things like ceramics, uh, music theory. Uh, we have an orchestra, we have a jazz band, we have a choir, we have two a cappella groups. Um, there are uh, several different music clubs that students can be a part of. Um, and students can take private music lessons uh, during the academic day. Um, they can start a new um, instrument if they'd like, um, but our schedule does allow for students to do both music and uh, athletics, robotics at St. Mark's. Um, this is a picture of a typical dorm room. Uh, you can see um, both uh, beds are able to be on the floor. Um, all of our dorm rooms at St. Mark's are single rooms or double rooms. So one to two students per room. Um, and we have small dorms. Um, most of our dorms, uh, we have 12 of them, and most of our dorms house uh, between 20 and 24 students. So it's a small group of students uh, living in each dormitory. Um, and again, this is a picture of sort of the, the main school building, as I said, school under one roof. Most of what happens happens in this main academic building. Um, again, intentionally small, 365 students, but thinking big and taking advantage of um, our location, um, the opportunity for uh, global opportunities, uh, and um, that is a bit about St. Mark's. Um, my contact information is there, and I will put in the chat in just a moment a link to the Experience St. Mark's online. So if you have any interest in checking out some of those videos of the online classes, you can feel free to do that. Thank you very much, Elise, you know, for the presentation. And uh, so, I mean, I, I've, uh, there are some uh, questions that I've collected, some, you know, for specific schools, some is uh, for everyone to answer. Um, so, and uh, so we'll just, uh, so I've collected a few already, but I'll also ask the families, you know, to, you know, feel free to ask the questions now. And then uh, I'll start, I guess, uh, throwing questions around. Uh, so, uh, 
I guess so. I will go through uh, some of the short, quick, uh, shorter, and easier questions first. You know, so one question is uh, for Elise. You know, just uh, so sometimes I want to know uh, about like the international numbers uh, uh, at St. Mark. So how many students from China? Uh, how many uh, international students in total? That uh, so, like some of the about like the uh, student volume at St. Mark. Sure. So about eighteen percent of our students um, are international. Um, we typically bring in um, between five to eight new students every year from um, China. Um, we do distinguish between mainland China and Hong Kong. Um, we, the past couple of years, we have brought in um, between one and three students from um, Hong Kong as well. Um, uh, but we have been mandated by our board to keep our international population right around 20 percent. Okay, got it. No problem. Thank you. Um, so the next question, I guess, is for, uh, I guess, for everyone. Um, so it's regarding um, the, I guess, you know, the upcoming year, because I heard, you know, from your presentation, you know, uh, seems like at least, you know, the plan right now is to, uh, is, you know, for school to uh, open, you know, in, uh, in, in, uh, in the fall, you know, hopefully. Uh, and there will be a high, seems like a, a hybrid approach is being uh, uh, applied, you know, whether it's online, a mixed one, or on campus. Um, but right, for students who, let's say, are stuck in the, uh, I would say, the visa process, or students who are not, uh, like, uh, are not able, you know, to, uh, let's say, arrive in September, but they can arrive a little bit later, you know, so how are each school, I guess, dealing, you know, with these situations at the moment? Well, I guess I, I can start out. Um, you know, I think, I, I think all, all of our schools are going to be flexible. And I think, you know, this year, you know, in, in particular is, is very unique. Uh, it's, it's certainly unprecedented where, you know, schools have, have had to make a lot of decisions um, you know, without much kind of past experience having, having to do this. So uh, I know I can speak personally for Faye is, you know, uh, all the conversations have been that, you know, everyone has to be flexible and, you know, all of our uh, constituents have to be flexible, whether it's the, the students, the parents, the teachers, the administration, we all have to kind of figure this out um, as we go. And I, I know that that's a very difficult way of approaching things. You know, everyone kind of wants to have this plan and they want to know what's going to happen. It's just a very difficult time to, to make long-term plans. So uh, I, I do think that on a typical year, you know, we try, you know, we rarely have, a, you know, students that will come in mid-year or, you know, for the winter or for the spring term. I think this year, looking forward, we're going to have to be flexible that way. Um, and, you know, I, th I think with the visa issues and, you know, those specific travel restriction issues, um, you know, for us, it's, it's more about making sure that we still have something to offer those students who can't make it to campus on time in the fall. Uh, and then whenever they can make it to campus, obviously we're going to kind of roll them right in to the rest of the, the student population and, and the rest of the school year. So, you know, for us, it's really about making sure that, you know, we, we, we get the students, you know, into Fay. Uh, we get them, you know, uh, you know, as part of our student body. Um, and then when the fall comes, when September comes and all of those kind of travel restrictions and, and things kind of get played out and we get to see it a little bit more clearly, um, you know, we're going to have options for both. We're going to have the on-campus option, but we're also going to have that remote learning and distance learning option until they can make it to campus. So again, I think this year it's all about flexibility and that's that's been kind of the key word for us. Yeah, I'll just uh, augment uh, Matt's answer by saying that the goal at the gunnery is to have this hybrid program um, where it's absolutely the case that if you are participating in the remote platform, that when you can get to school, say later in September, October, you are going to be exactly where the students are academically that are on campus. They are going to be synchronous in the scope and, and um, schedule of those classes. And the other thing is, you know, I think boarding schools have shown, because we are filled with caring intellectual people, thinkers, that we have been able to be nimble in this, the face of this problem. And so we've all, I think, surprised ourselves by the innovations that we've thought of. And so an example of that at the gunnery would be, um, how can we uh, 
how can we welcome our new students into our community even sooner, even earlier than we normally would in September in case they aren't going to be able to be here in September right away? What can we do this summer to be making them feel like they're a part of the community sooner? So we've launched uh, this summer connections program for our new students to bring them into our community, to introduce them to our prefects, to introduce them to other student leaders so that they will feel no matter what the mode of learning they're in, whether it's on campus at the gunnery or remote, they're going to already feel like they're a part of our community. Thank you. Um, and I'll just, to supplement both what Matt and Alex said, um, we we know that not every student is going to be able to to be back on campus um, when we start in September. Um, and so, as I mentioned um, a little bit earlier, um, the school has invested a lot of resources in doing professional development for the faculty um, this summer so that we are prepared to offer both synchronous and asynchronous curriculum for all of our students. Um, and similar to the gunnery, um, we've done a number of, we've been calling them pre-orientation meetings um, where we've been taking all of our, for example, new ninth grade um, boarding students um, and connecting them with prefects, um, current uh, or rising 10th grade students. Um, and we've been doing that about once a month um, since May um, so that they can start developing those relationships um, and start putting faces to names and getting to know one another. Um, but it is absolutely the goal that students, um, regardless of whether or not they are on campus, are having the access uh, to all of the curriculum, the face time with the teachers, um, as well as the other students. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll let Sandy translate a little bit of this because I think it's an important message you know, for the families to know. 那刚才三所学校呢都有讲到学校都会就是以一个比较有弹性的手法去做这种的处理所以大家不用太担心那然后呢跟那里有讲到就是说其实呢最近这个疫情的情况呢其实对于就是技术学校来说呢他们也是运用了他们的老师啊各方面因为学校比较小几个学校其实都是说像就是两个高中他们都是三百多人其实他们是像
Um, so just want to hear a little bit of the, I guess, the your take, you know, on students deferring an entire, like an entire year, um, or or if that is even an option offered by uh, any of uh, your schools. I can. I'll jump in and start. I think one of the challenges that we're all facing is that the news changes, um, you know, very quickly and on a daily basis, and so you know, I think that. For right now, for our returning international students who already hold visas, we remain very optimistic that they are going to be able to get back to campus this fall, that travel is going to be resumed, and, and that's going to happen. So that leaves the challenge really for our new enrolled students that don't yet have the visas. And just one more word about our returning students. I want to reassure families listening that the schools in New England are uniquely benefiting from the um, leadership that our states, Massachusetts, Connecticut, New Hampshire, Vermont, have in place, and New York, where there has been great um, restraint and great leadership. And so we are really benefiting from the pandemic going in the direction that we want it to be. So I wanted to, to make sure that the callers hear that that the news is not all bad in the United States in terms of the pandemic. But back for families considering deferring, I understand, I have a, a, a son that graduated the gunnery this spring who's looking to go to college this fall. So I totally understand the concern about, should we just defer? Wouldn't that be a safer bet? And what I think we are hoping still is that the embassies are going to reopen, that even our new students are going to be able to get their visas in time. So what is the worst case scenario? The worst case scenario is if that doesn't happen and families that are thought they were headed for boarding school this fall are stuck. Right now, I think that boarding schools are encouraging those families to stay with your enrollment, to participate in the remote platforms that we have in the hopes that the visa situation is going to be resolved, that the vaccine is going to be developed and that we are going to reopen. That is going to have to ultimately be a decision that your family makes personally. I think that schools are not going to um, be, um, we are looking to be partners with you. And hopefully if you've already enrolled in a school, you feel a sense of trust with the school in which you've enrolled. And I think that boarding schools are looking to be very open and transparent with our families. Um, to give an example, the Gunnery has committed to communicating with our families every two weeks this summer to give them the information that they need before their enrollment contract becomes binding in July so that they have the information they need to make that choice. I think probably I'll speak for the gunnery and then everyone else can, to, can chime in. We are not yet at a point where we're saying that we would allow a deferral because we are confident that the delays are going to be short term and that we are going to plan for remote learning that will keep our international students where they need to be. Um, but again, we are very much uh, sympathetic with what international families are considering. And if the news changes, if it seems like maybe the kids aren't going to be able to get here for the entire year, we're going to keep evolving in our thinking. Thank you very much. Yes, I, I mean, I, I can echo everything that Alex just said. I think that was kind of perfectly delivered for, for us too. So, um, you know, for, for us, our, the, the most important thing is, you know, the, there's a reason why we accepted these students this year. You know, we want you to be a part of our community and, you know, we're very confident with our, our distance learning. So if anything were to prevent these students from showing up and arriving in September, we're very confident with the idea that, you know, given the distance learning program as it stands and as it's going to be developed throughout the summer as well for the fall, that these students are going to be in a better place when they do enter Fay, if they are there with us, even remotely, in the fall, um, and and really kind of bringing them into the community that way and 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 bringing them along that way. So, uh, so we are not uh, doing deferrals uh, this this year. Um, you know, it's it's not something that we've 
uh, you know, thought would be a, a good idea um, for, for us or for, for the students. Um, because again, we do think that it, this is going to be something that while it may delay the September entry, those students will be uh, a part of our community soon enough. So we want to make sure that we get them in right from day one and, and we get them introduced to kind of our teachers, our other, the other students, and, and what the expectations of, of Faye look like so that when they do arrive, they're going to be in, in a much better place. Uh, yeah, I will just echo what Matt and Alex said. Um, we, uh, that the health uh, and safety of our students is the most important thing. So we are taking our time um, making the decisions uh, about action. Um, we uh, are happy to have conversations with all of our, our new and returning families um, to make sure that um, they are feeling comfortable um, with the uh, opportunities and options that we are providing. Um, and uh, we are open to discussing the deferral option with families. Um, but um, at this point, we are feeling um, good about uh, the possibility of bringing most students back onto campus. Um, a hybrid curriculum so that if families, students aren't able to get to campus right away, they are going to be um, learning and keeping up. 那三所学校呢就是讲关于有家长问到就是能不能就是呃十一年再过去延迟一年那呃首先就是呃根瑞跟菲呢他们都讲了就是呃其实他们对于今年就是九月份这个情况还是比较乐观一些就是说像呃就
is much more about community building at this point than really sort of churchy. Um, six formers, which are seniors, are the ones that give the chapel talks on Tuesday and Friday mornings. And they're usually reflecting on their time at St. Mark's, offering words of um, advice, um, wisdom, reflection to all of us um, that are, are there um, during chapel. We also do require all students to take one year of religion um, as a core course. Um, and that uh, core course um, covers Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Um, so students get um, sort of a basic overview of those three uh, particular areas of religion. Um, and then they also choose a semester long course um, to focus in another aspect of religion. Could be something like um, Eastern religious thought. Um, we have a, a religion course called The Quest. Um, we have uh, courses in religion that are more geared towards um, social justice. Uh, so many options, um, ethics and morality uh, in terms of the religion curriculum at St. Mark's. Um, and as I said, um, we welcome and celebrate students of all different faiths and religions. 那 Saint Mark's 就是说它是一个主教然后它的这个基督教背景呢就是学校是这个一八六五年开始然后就超过了一百五十年的历史那但是其实学校里面的学生都有不同的宗教背景所以这个他们的这个就是整体的一个崇拜的活动呢可能是
uh, it's, it's incredibly safe, uh, a nice quiet, um, you know, with a, a nice affluent population around. So uh, I always say we're 25 miles outside of Boston. So, you know, we're close enough to the city to be able to access it, but we're far, far enough away to avoid a lot of the, the negatives that a city brings as well. Um, so, you know, it's a, it, it's a really peaceful place. Um, the police station is, is right down the road from both of us, you know, with, within a mile uh, of it. So we do have campus security guards. We have, you know, security cameras on campus. All the doors are, are locked and, you know, only accessed with, with a key card. So we're taking all of those safety protocols. You know, we, we have all of those precautions already in place uh, to make sure that we create a safe environment for our students on campus. Um, and again, with the, the kind of the, the current climate of, of you know, the, the United States right now and uh, a lot of the topics that are being discussed, um, you know, we're, we're not shying away from it. And, you know, we, we have a very diverse community and we celebrate that diversity and we, we love it. Um, and we want every student to feel comfortable uh, on our campus. And, and that's, again, that's the, the top priority for us. Um, so um, I'll, I'll let the others speak to kind of what their schools are, are doing or, you know, I, but I, I feel like in general, all of these boarding schools, because of our, our diversity and our populations and the fact that, you know, the students live on campus, this is, you know, their second home for most of their, their the year. Um, you know, we, we, we want to make sure that we're active about this and, and that, you know, we, we don't shy away from those conversations. Instead, we lean into it and, and we face it head on. I think Matt answered that beautifully. And again, um, one of the best things that equips boarding schools to be able to go through these periods um, when things are more on the forefront is the fact that we are global communities. Our communities are made up of people from all around the world, from intellectual faculty members who have spent time abroad and have those experiences. And so that notion of leaning into it um, we are able to do that, and we are also able to do it in, you know, a very safe way. You know, boarding schools are able to ensure that um, uh, co conduct happens in a certain way. Um, there are no, boarding schools have zero tolerances for bullying, um, and so these are communities where we want the free exchange of ideas, but it's done in a way that's appropriate for the age of the students that we have in our communities. So um, we can help guide those conversations and they're going to take place within the um, expectations of, of respect and mutual understanding that, that we've um, cultivated you know, over years of our schools being in existence. And again, I think the point about our boarding schools typically being located in these beautiful rural settings um, allows us to ensure the safety of our students. And then the final thing I'll, I'll say is I understand again, empathetically speaking, if you're in a different country, you're seeing the footage and the news of, of what's going on in the United States and it can seem all consuming. And while it is a big moment in our um, history right now. Um, you know, I have friends and relatives that live in the major metropolitan areas. They're safe. They don't feel that the cities are lawless. I mean, so my point is, is that even in the cities, you know, these protests and things that are going on are contained and that the, the country does still feel very much like a law and order abiding place. Um, and so we, but we do understand, you know, your concerns for your children, of course. Yes, and um, I think very similar to both Matt and Alex, um, we've had many opportunities, um, both public and private forums for our students, our faculty, our staff to uh, have discussions um, over Zoom. Um, we have uh, several different affinity groups uh, that we had formed already that have been working. Um, our academic uh, department is looking very carefully at the curriculum this summer um, to make sure that we are incorporating um, different voices uh, into the curriculum. Um, but the most important thing is that we are um, doing our best to facilitate conversations, um, to talk about these issues and talk about how we as individuals and as a school um, can and should be responding.
那三个学校呢，他们就是在于这个呃，对于在呃学生的安全啊，就是这个歧视啊等等方面，其实都有就是相同呃，就是的一个呃，就是取态跟呃方向。啊、呃，像就是，呃，学校说呢，就是在他们的安全，呃，就是学生的安全、学生的健康，这个是他们最看重的。那不能说就是完全就是说，呃，杜绝这个呃歧视或者是一些不公义的事情发生。但是如果有这样的事情发生的时候，呃，学校会就是学习听不同的一些声音，然后就是说有这样。的事情发生的时候，就是在这个课程里面，在不同的一些呃线上的会议等等，他们会去讨论这一些的事情，然后聆听不同的声音。那呃，其实在，在呃这个，尤其是在多元。呃 ，boarding school 这个多元技术学校的这个环境里面呢，他们有不同的国籍的人，有然后教职员也是非常的国际化，他们也是呃对于就不同的呃学生也非常的了解，所以他们就是会呃在这方面就是希望能够尽量的做好，然后呃他们对于这种就是欺凌啊或者是这种情况呢，都是呃就是零容忍的。呃，就是当然，学校他们可能，例如说像就是呃 ，Saint Mark 跟这个费他们在的这个呃，就是距离 Boston， 就是说呃，三十分钟，然后就也是比较近呃，但是其实也是在一个很安全的小镇。然后就像呃，阿里老师说 g u n n e r y 他们也是就是在呃，看到大家看到新闻的时候，可能会觉得啊，可能在大城市很不安全，但是其实呃，如果听就是当地的一些呃，美国人他。他们的一些想法其实没有，就是新闻里面讲的这么呃负面，所以其实大家就不用过分的焦虑。然后在呃，就是技术学校的这个环境，他们会尽力的确保呃学生会有一个就是健康、呃安全、公平的一个环境去学习跟生活。啊、uh, ，But really, thank you. You know, uh, uh, very much. You know, you know, Matt, Alex, you know, at least you know for you know all the great, uh, I guess insights. You know, on Um, how you know the boarding schools are running? Well, the, we're facing like a a very unique time, you know, I guess in history, you know. But uh, I think uh, we are definitely uh, glad. I'm actually very glad to hear, you know, uh, that you, know, you you have a very optimistic view, you know, on how things will be moving on. And uh, so I definitely um, for us, you know, or any families, you know, today for a. For them who are interested in either Fay or Saint Mark's, you know, or Gunnery, you know, definitely will will guide them to uh, guide them to your way, you know, and uh, hopefully you'll see, you know, some of the application that come in your as well. But uh, thank you very much, you know, for your time today, and uh, we look forward, you know, to staying in touch uh, throughout the fall. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Much. Thank you. All right, thank you. 好的，那今天的很感谢啊，非常感谢三位老师今天的这个分享。然后我们今天的讲座会到这里啊。如果有什么问题的话呢，也可以在微信啊群里面啊继续去联系我们啊。就非常谢谢今天三位老师。So thank you very much, and、uh, we all have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.